I'm so excited to tell you about the awesome, incredible planning phase of the Strategic Prevention Framework. Be ready to get exhilarated and dream outlandishly. Welcome, my name is Dina Kemp and I am a Community Support Specialist at DECA. Planning is a process of developing a logical sequence of strategies and steps leading to desired outcomes that reduce community level problems. In other words, it will be your guiding force. This is an opportunity to re-energize the community and coalition members. On the screen, there are a few questions that can be used during the planning phase. Creating ownership for a problem and for the solutions within a community includes the following components. The planning process should be inclusive, diverse, and open to all who wish to participate. All ideas are welcome. However, the coalition must remain focused on the identified problems it seeks to address. All ideas should be treated with respect and welcomed as concepts with potential value for the community. Make sure everyone's ideas are heard, even if it means collecting them in multiple manners, such as discussion and voting in a coalition meeting, online virtual polls, or one-on-one -on -one interviews. Enlisting coalition and community member input and ideas can create a cohesive group willing to grow, learn, listen, be heard, acknowledge identified problems, and take responsibility for these solutions. Make sure your identified population is a part of the planning process. Remember, nothing about us without us. Be sure that roles and responsibilities are clearly defined and understood. Using welcome packets for each new member with the vision, mission, roles, and responsibilities, as well as current data, is an easy and accessible way to accomplish this. For more information on how to create a welcome packet, please contact your DECA Community Support Specialist. There are several important reasons to plan. Here are a few. Planning can save time and money. It helps to ensure that the strategies your coalition selects are most likely to reduce problems in your community. It will help allocate resources needed for implementation. Planning enables your coalition to develop an action plan that describes who is doing what and by when. It allows you to create an evaluation plan at the beginning of the SPIF process by evaluating communities, coalition meetings, cultural competence, and implementing strategies. Planning can also help your coalition secure future funding. A strategic plan usually contains a mission and vision statement, goals, prioritized risk and protective factors, development of strategies, and development of measurable outcomes. The strategic plan helps guide the coalition and builds off the work in the logic model by expanding the planning process and creating objectives for measurable three to five year outcomes. It also serves important functions by helping you create elements that are not commonly included in a logic model, such as a mission and vision. A mission is what your coalition is trying to accomplish and why, whereas a vision is your hope or dream for the future. Strategic plans also help you provide more of the nuts and bolts of how you're going to implement evidence-based strategies. In contrast, action plans are typically shorter in duration and more specific than strategic plans. Action plans are specific, so if leadership or roles change, another leader will be able to keep moving forward. Some coalitions create a planning work group to develop a comprehensive plan with goals, objectives, and strategies aimed at meeting the problems in the community. Work group members can also determine cost and identify resources needed for effective strategy implementation. A coalition may have several work groups. For example, they may have a data work group, a capacity building work group, or whatever work group they deem is important. Work groups or subcommittees create opportunities for coalitions and community members to serve where they have a passion, skills, knowledge, or experience. Remember, community ownership of responsibilities is a huge component surrounding the success of the prevention efforts. These steps are meant to be a guide for establishing a planning work group. Please feel free to customize these steps to meet your community's needs. In this slide, it is referred to as work groups. 
Other language you may hear are task force or subcommittees. To prioritize risk and protective factors, there are two areas to examine, importance and changeability. Importance involves the coalition looking at the ways the risk and protective factors are influencing or swaying the identified problem. Changeability identifies the resources and readiness in a community to make a difference in the risk and protective factors. Some questions to be asked include, is there an evidence-based strategy that addresses the identified problem? Will the strategies make a change in the time frame available? Does the coalition or community have the resources, readiness, evidence-based strategies aligned with a realistic time frame? The best strategies to address the identified problem are going to be of high importance and with high opportunity to make change. Using a gap analysis will help your coalition to identify additional needs to effectively do the prevention work needed in your community for the desired outcomes. During a gap analysis process, your coalition may answer questions like, what data is missing that would provide a clearer picture of the community? What programs, policies, and practices are currently in place, and do they need to be enhanced? Do staff, volunteers, or coalition members need training? This process will indicate whether these existing programs, policies, and practices need to be enhanced, strengthened, or communicated more within the community. It will help determine any gaps that need to be filled with new strategies or perhaps supplementing an existing program with environmental strategies will be enough. Your funding source will most likely require the use of evidence-based strategies. Identifying existing evidence-based strategies are one of the first steps in the planning process. You have already identified influencing factors. Are there existing evidence-based strategies currently in place that can be built upon or enhanced during the planning process? When choosing strategies, keep cultural competency and sustainability at the forefront of the process. Strategies need to fall into one of the following categories, program, policy, including enforcement, and practice. Remember to think about the evaluation process and how each strategy would be evaluated. There is an evaluation module that provides additional detail. Strategies that have been researched and tested to produce effective prevention outcomes are called evidence-based strategies. Selecting evidence-based approaches is important to get the best results for a community's time and resources. Choosing programs, policies, and practices that have been proven to work will increase efficiency. Evidence-based strategies have documented evidence of effectiveness and are those that research has shown to be effective. In addition to selecting an intervention that is evidence-based, you need to ensure that the intervention or combination of interventions that you select are a good fit for the community. Effective fit. Strategies need to be effective to produce the desired results. Conceptual fit. A strategy is a good conceptual fit if it directly addresses one or more of the priority factors driving a specific problem and has been shown to produce positive outcomes for the members of the target population. Practical fit. A strategy has a good practical fit if it is culturally relevant for the target population, the community has the readiness to implement it, the capacity to support it, and if it enhances or reinforces existing prevention activities. Evidence-based strategies with both conceptual fit and practical fit will have the highest likelihood of producing positive prevention outcomes. Implementers are the people who will be carrying out the chosen strategies and working with the target population. These important people and their roles are an essential part of the planning process. Utilize the 12 core sectors shown on this slide to ensure that the implementers are inclusive and include the target population. Having implementers from these 12 core sectors allows a broader outreach to accomplish the best outcomes. The logic model is a visual representation of your plan to create change in your community. Logic models are necessary because they show how all the elements of your strategic plan work together and make it easy to see any gaps or inconsistencies.
In the planning process, you will develop an at-glance model which will explain the identified problem, the risk and protective factors, the strategies, and long-term goals. It is important to make a connection between each of these areas in your logic model. The risk and protective factors must be directly connected to or influencing the identified problems. The chosen strategies will address or make a difference in the identified risk and protective factors. While developing the logic model, gaps will be identified. Also, consider if there are co-occurring dual areas that should be addressed. An example of this might be suicide rates increasing along with substance abuse disorder rates. Think about other strategies currently implemented in the community and identify them on the logic model. The logic model will make evaluation and reporting easier. Developing a logic model before implementing a program or activity not only makes the intended outcomes and assumptions of the project explicit, but also makes evaluation easier and more meaningful. There are different logic models available for use. However, for this module, the Kansas Prevention Collaborative KPICI logic model has been utilized. If your funding sources require a different logic model, please contact your community support specialist for assistance. Part of every stage of the strategic prevention framework process are the concepts of cultural competence and sustainability. These two concepts should clearly be present in each stage and help guide you in all areas of the process. The strategic prevention framework puts cultural competence and sustainability at its center as these key concepts must be incorporated throughout the implementation of the framework. Sustaining a coalition requires creating a strong coalition that brings together a community to develop and carry out a comprehensive plan to achieve change. Start to work on sustainability as you are planning. The more methodical you are in developing a plan, the more likely you are to attract funders and local support for future work. Cultural competence is an awareness of the characteristics of one's own and others' cultures. Communities affected by the problem you are working on need to be involved in all aspects of the work of the coalition, from assessment and planning through implementation and evaluation. The best idea and plans will fall flat unless solutions to the problems are culturally appropriate. Good planning requires a group process. Whether planning happens within a formal work group or among a more informal group of partners, it cannot represent the thoughts and ideas of just one person. Decisions must reflect the ideas and input of individuals from across community sectors. At the end of the planning phase, you will know you have a comprehensive plan by answering a few questions. Are there enough strategies to obtain the desired outcome? Is the plan clear, concrete, measurable, and easily understood? Does the coalition have adequate capacity and resources? The SPIF process is cyclic. Revising and refining your coalition efforts should be an ongoing process. There are additional e-learning modules that can be viewed to support your continued efforts to implement the SPIF. Links for these resources are on the screen. Additional resources to enhance your prevention work can be found on the Kansas Prevention Collaborative website. Thank you for your time, and if you have any questions, please contact your DECA Community Support Specialist who can provide technical assistance or training.